Hey, what's going on? Todd Shaw here with another episode of The Sawdust Dude. Welcome back. Today, I've got an awesome project for you. It's one that, uh, if you're a beginner, there's something in this for you. You're going to love this. Uh, and even if you're an experienced woodworker, this project is a lot of fun. You know, getting back to being a beginner, you know, you got to start somewhere. And this is a, a project that I've used in woodworking classes for, I mean, like day one beginners. And I had a lady one time, she goes, Hey, Todd, I'm kind of nervous about doing this uh, woodworking thing. And uh, can you promise me I'll leave here with all my fingers? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you'll leave here with all your fingers. It may be in a Ziploc bag, but you'll leave here with all your fingers. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, she laughed and we had a good time. And, and she's uh, done, gone on and done several projects. Uh, so if you're an experienced woodworker, you know, like, well, you know, that's a little... That's, below me you know nah I don't think like that guys because you know what there are a lot of times that I come home from uh, doing carpentry work all day long and I want to do some woodworking so I come down to my micro shop and I don't want to spend a lot of time but I want to do something that's quick and fun you know what and this is a project that I always go to not to mention this is something that's a great gift and something that I uh, that I sell on a regular basis in my retail shop so what am I talking about? Well, you ready? Okay, here we go. <laughs> it's, uh, my unveiling wasn't so dramatic. <laughs> Let's try that again. Ready? You know what, what I'm talking about? Here we go. Ah, yeah, it's the world famous counterbalance wine bottle holder. And it's kind of cool, you know, it's got some angles to it and you just stick it right up there like that you kind of have to play with it sometimes a little bit and that's it something that's quick and easy and a lot of fun and that you'll wow your friends with all right you, you ready okay well let's get started let's get to work all right we'll start off with our stock and our materials so what, what you're going to need to uh, do this project with uh, just go to uh, home depot or lowe's and uh, buy some one by four oak and uh, one by four is three quarter inches by about this one's three and five eighths so uh, it'll be a perfect size, so you really don't have to rip the width down or mess with the thickness. We're pretty much good to go, and we're just going to uh, trim up for the length that we need. So uh, always use a hardwood on this. Uh, if you use pine, spruce, something like that, it's considered a softwood. It's really not durable enough and really doesn't get the finish and the look that you're going for because we want this to be uh, kind of classy and elegant looking. And oak is a good wood that uh, stains out really, really well. Now make sure you stick around uh, to the very end of this video because we're going to talk, talk about the, uh, the little twist, something different that you can do uh, that will make your project just uh, scale it up and uh, kind of add that wow factor even more so uh, than just a straight piece of oak. All right, so we have our, our stock. So that's kind of like the first step. Next thing we want to do, we're going to put 45 degree angles um, on this and both angles are kind of going to be going uh, in, in the same direction and uh, if you go to website uh, sawdustdude.com you can download the plans for this project and uh, and kind of follow along instead of trying to follow along with the video but this will give you a good overview so I just make my first mark and I can looking at this length of this wood I can get two projects out of one piece of wood so I'm gonna come close to the end and just make my mark and then from in here, I know that I want to um, kind of hold this piece up here like this as well. So I know my mark is here, and I want my angle uh, going down this way. Now from in here, okay, so from in here, what I want to do is I want to get nine and three quarter inches from long point to long point. So I'm going to hold my tape measure up here, uh, just kind of go down and do uh, on three quarter inches. From in here, you can also stick it on top like this and uh, do nine and three quarters. I'm going to take that. That's going to be my long point on this end. Transfer this over and then over this way. And then also, I'm going to take, just take my pencil and make my mark so I know that that's the long point. And then over here, that's the long point there. So when I go to my miter saw to make my cuts, that I know uh, that I'm getting the right angles. Okay? Okay, our next step is uh, real simple. I've just, uh, we need to get the length, and it's nine and three quarters. And so I've, uh, with our 45 degree angles, 
Uh, I've made my nine and three quarters and uh, made the first mark, which would be the long point, and then the uh, down to nine and three quarters, and that would be the short point uh, on this next cut. And so I scribe my lines on the side, making sure that I have my angles correctly, and we're ready to get <clears throat> we're ready to get started. Now, if you don't have a a, a miter saw, um, you know you can always. Uh, if you don't have one, don't rush out and buy one just for this project. You know they do make uh, miter boxes, uh, which are like twenty bucks. And uh, if you have a little uh, uh, little cross cut saw like this, or even a uh, a hand saw, it works out. Uh, just fine with those uh, miter boxes and I'll have one uh, on display for you here so you know what I'm talking about but since we got a, a miter saw let's just go ahead and use it Forty-five degree angles cut on our stock. Uh, the next part we need to do is to uh, get our hole where we insert the wine bottle. Uh, we're simply going to come down about an inch and seven eighths to two inches. Come from there, and we'll just make a mark with our speedy square to get the center that way. And then we look at our uh, the width of our, um, our our piece here, and just get half of that. So from here. Mine's about uh, about three and nine sixteenths. So from here, I just make my center mark where to put my uh, drill bit. And so I got the center there, and that works out really, really well. Now let's talk about drilling here real quickly. Uh, if you got a drill press, it's probably the best way to uh, to work that out. And uh, let me switch up my table here. But if you don't have a drill press, and uh, you know we've talked a lot about the uh, about the Craig table and, and using this um, real handy table, um, here's what you'll uh, here's what you want to do when you go to drill it, and uh, this is where the Craig table comes in real handy. Uh, I've got my little uh, my clamp that goes in this way. Uh, always want to put down a sacrificial, sacrificial board because it goes through there. Uh, now I can just take a straight board and um, move this over and then uh, lock this down. I really don't want to hold it with one hand and try to drill with the other uh, because when you're drilling and if your bit binds up in the wood then all of a sudden your uh, your project becomes a uh, an air pro airplane propeller starts spinning around and kind of it's real unsafe. So anytime you're doing the, some drilling, you want to make sure that you have a good sharp bit, but you also have your uh, your stock locked down. Uh, another way to do it is uh, this is an old piece of MDF uh, that I had. I'm putting a cleat down this way. I can uh, put my project in there and then grab another piece of wood and then. Uh, little small drill bit kind of drill right here just a little bit just start a pilot hole and then uh, just for giggles we'll uh, just countersink those a little bit so they're not in the way and then um, Grab my in impact driver and lock down this, uh, lock down our piece here. And so, and just like that, with some wood screws. Now, now my piece is uh, real secure and it's not going to spin around, it's not going to hurt me, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to ruin my, uh, my project that I'm working on. And the next thing you do is uh, just grab a bit and go for it. Now there's a couple of different bits that you can use and how do we get that hole. Like I said, you can use a drill press, certainly is the best way to do that and still want to use a, a lockdown jig if you have it. Like I said, you don't want that piece uh, spinning around on you. Um, using a Fortner bit, which looks like this one right here, and uh, also a, a hole saw. 
And uh, they call us a, a, a saw, but uh, one of the things that you want to always remember when using any kind of bit to do finish work is to make sure that there are uh, a lot of teeth on here. I've got Fortner bits and whole saw uh, bits that uh, are kind of aggressive, but are more for, uh, for plumbing, things like that. And these are bits that I use uh, when installing uh, uh, door hardware and things like that. So, so you want a bit that's gonna give you a nice clean cut. And then simply just load it in your drill and uh, get the center from in here, just like that. And just drill all the way through like that. Now you want to take your time, and this is an old bit, and it's going to, you can see smoke a lot. Uh, take your time, it's going to get real hot, and uh, go real slow when you're, when you're uh, drilling through that way. Um, And just like that, we got a nice, a nice hole. Another reason you want to put, uh, have a sacrificial block underneath. <clears throat> if you just drilled through, say you held it over the edge like this, on the on the back side of your project, you would get blowout. It would, uh, it would tear this wood and uh, and bl and blow just what's called blow it out. It would rip the wood and kind of damage your whole project. So one, make sure you have a good sharp bit whether it's the whole saw bit uh, like this one or the Fortner bit uh, like this one, that it's a bit with a lot of teeth on it. The more the teeth, the finer the cut. It's kind of like a saw blade. And so from in there, and basically your project is done already. Uh, you've got it like this and we can just kind of test it out from in here. And, and it works. And it doesn't get much simpler than that, but it's a lot of fun. And like I said, you can kind of wow your friends with it. Uh, from in here, you just take some sandpaper, lightly sand the edges. Uh, don't, don't mess with the angles too much. You can lightly sand and knock those hard, uh, hard edges off. And then, then go through and uh, sand out the, the edges here. Um, make sure you get all the sharp edges off and get the stickers off. And uh, get it uh, sanded down. Uh, start out with some uh, some 120, and then go to 180, uh, 320, and then 400 grit sandpaper. Uh, make sure your project's nice and smooth. With some Wipeco uh, Danish oil, here's our natural finish, or use uh, something a little darker, like a medium walnut. Uh, on oak and uh, it'll give it a little bit darker deeper color uh, use a test pattern or a test piece of wood first before you go doing it on your finished piece just to see if it's uh, the look that you're going for all right and then once that uh, Danish oil uh, has dried uh, you can use uh, just a simple spray uh, top coat uh, uh, here's a spar urethane uh, you can use a uh, uh, polycrylic, which is water-based, low odor, uh, works out real well, especially in my small shop here, and uh, it is a good, good product. Kind of goes on milky looking, then dries super clear. It's a good uh, interior finish to use, or you can even use lacquer. Uh, so uh, just finish it out. And hey, folks, uh, like I told you, something if you want a little twist on the end. Alright, well here it goes. I told you I had a little something at the end for you. How do you take a simple little project like this and it kind of elevate it a little bit more? Well, uh, here's one way that you can do it is uh, by doing a glue up. And this is cherry and, uh, and curly maple that I have in here. If you check out another episode on clamping and, uh, and glue ups, uh, this is a good project uh, for that. And this, what it simple is, is a glue up and uh, turns in real handy. Uh, Here's like the first step of it that we actually used in the episode. 
and I just need to drill my hole, sand it, and finish it, and it's ready to go. Also, uh, if you have a woodcraft or a cling spore or a fine a place that sells uh, uh, exotic wood, uh, here's a, a piece of zebra wood. And just the, the wood itself, you know, just kind of, not a lot of people have seen this. Uh, so try using a different uh, species of wood in your project just to kind of dress it up and give it that little wow factor. <clears throat> Hey guys, thanks again for joining us on the Sawdust, dude. Hope you had a good time. You know, just because it's a simple project doesn't mean it can't be a fun project. Uh, I really enjoy doing this. And this is something that you can make money with as well. Hey, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, go hey, make sure you go to our website, sawdustdude.com, to download the plans for this project. And once again, thanks again for joining us on the Sawdust, dude. I'll see you real soon.